All right, we are back again for another video. Today we're going to talk about the issue of keeping your shoulder blades, your scapula, retracted during the bench. And there's a few issues with this that I see popping up all the time with my lifters, so I figured to make a video and just post it so everyone can benefit from it. So issue number one is people not having the control, the understanding of how to retract and protract their shoulder blades in the first place. So we'll cover that first. Then even if you know how to do it in isolation, there's the problem of how do you do it when you unrack the bench and how do you make sure you keep doing it when you lock out every rep. So those are the three main things we'll cover. So let's get right to it. First thing is what is retracting or squeezing back your shoulder blades? So the con one of the points of confusion a lot of times people don't understand when we talk about, we'll just say squeeze your shoulders back, they think the shoulder is the thing that moves the arm. That's the shoulder joint. What we're really talking about here is a movement of the shoulder girdle, so the language gets confusing, the shoulder girdle. So we could just say, squeeze your scapula back or retract your scapula. But most people don't know what retract means, most people don't know what specifically what scapula are, so the language gets a little confusing. So for our purposes, if I say squeeze your shoulders back, retract your scapula, squeeze your shoulder blades back, for our purposes, it's all the same thing. We're talking about the shoulder girdle, and that, that demonstration is our first part. So thing one, a lot of people can't separate straightening their arms out from retracting and protracting their shoulder girdle. So let's come to the side and watch this. So here's the bottom of a bench press. I'm retracted, I'm arched. What a lot of people do is they push their, fo their shoulders forward like that. So a lot of people don't have the wherewithal, they don't understand the body movement to first have their arms locked out and independently retract, squeeze back, and protract, push forward their scapula, their shoulder blades. So the first thing we want to do is make sure get into the lockout position with your elbows locked out and squeeze back and push forward. You need to be able to do that independently. So I'm locked out with my arms and independently control your scapula, your shoulder girdle. That's thing one. You have to know how to do that. So if you can't do that right off the bat, you have to learn that. Those two are, are disconnected. You can have bent elbows and retracted shoulder blades, bent elbows and protracted shoulder blades. You can have straight elbows and retracted shoulder blades, or you can have straight elbows and protracted shoulder blades. So step one, come back around to the front. Step one is to, uh, to be able to learn and independently control your elbow, your elbow joint from your shoulder girdle. That's thing one. Thing two, once you can do that, you have to be able to get into the right position and then maintain that retraction as you unrack the bar. So one really, really often overlooked issue is the height of the hooks. A lot of people put the hooks up too high so that the only way that they can unrack the bar is by protracting. The, the, the hooks are up so high, their elbows are basically locked out and they still haven't unracked yet, so they have to do that. Now, is it possible to do that and then get back into retraction for the rep? Partially, but you can never really, if you fully lose it, with the bar under load, it's very, very hard, maybe even impossible to fully, fully get it back like you can get it before you unrack. So the goal is to get retracted before you unrack, stay retracted during the unrack, and then do your set. So you don't want to have the hooks up so high that even with your arms basically straight, you have to protract to unrack. So first of all, hooks have to be low enough. They don't need to be so low that you're basically doing a whole extra rep just to unrack it, but you need a few inches of clearance. If you don't have at least a few inches of clearance, the hooks are too low, or hooks are too high, you need to lower them. This rack has two inch spacings. Some rack have one inch spacings, which is the best so you can really put in the perfect spot. Some racks have three inch spacings. With a three inch spacing rack, it's a little tricky finding the right spot, but hopefully you'll be able to. But the idea is they can't be too high. With that said, let's come and look at what the unrack looks like. And we'll talk about some cues for it. So the first thing you want to do, like I said, is have the hooks at the right height, which I already have set up here. The second thing you want to do is lay back far enough back on the bench. One of the things that sometimes happens is if you're too far forward on the bench, even if the hooks are at the right height, your arms are already straight just by virtue of having to reach so far behind you that the only thing you can do is protract. So you also want to be far enough back on the bench. Now the, the thing that we're dealing with here is on the one hand, you want to be far back. On the other hand, if you're too far back, you're going to clip the hooks on the way up and down. So you can't be too far back. So we'll, let's watch and see what that looks like. I'm not going to do, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the whole elaborate bench setup. That's a different video. For our purposes, I'm just going to do a basic setup where I lay down on the bench, retract my shoulder blades and grab the bar. I'm not going to do a whole elaborate, how do you maximize your arch? That's a different thing. We're just talking about basic retraction here. So I'm going to lay down on the bench. If I go too far back, so here the bar is right above me, 
that's great. And I, I have bend in my elbows so I can unrack just with my elbow. So you see my elbow straighten without losing my retraction. But the problem is I'm too far back, right? That's a really great way to mess up your set by being too far back, clipping the hooks, and your whole set is busted. So you have to be far enough back that you have bend in your elbows that you can use, and the cue I'll often use is unrack with just your elbows, meaning you shouldn't have to push and retract, it's just your elbow that straightens out to unrack. So I'll say unrack with just your elbows, or only lock out your elbows to unrack. Not, not so far back that you clip the hooks, but not so far forward. Again, with the same height, if I'm all the way here in front of the bar, my elbows are already straight. I can't unrack unless I protract, unless I totally lose my shoulder. So what I want to do is I want to get so my eyes are under or maybe a drop behind the bar. So let's scoot and do a little bit of a close-up here so you can see. I want, I want you to be able to see the bar and me. So get to the side, get a little low. So my eyes are slightly behind the bar. Now you see there's bend in my elbow. So I can take the bar out of the rack just by locking out my elbows. Notice my shoulders stay back. What would it look like if I screwed this up? What would it look like if I protracted my shoulders here? It would look like that. Right, you see, keeping my shoulders back versus protracting. See the difference? So I keep my retraction, just lock out the elbows, bring it over, and then I'm ready to go. So we want to do just elbows as opposed to push out. Okay? Now we essentially, to do it right through the set, all you have to do is repeat that. So it's just elbows, over. Okay, I'm gonna do my first rep. And all I do is lock out my elbows. If I push forward, see what happens? So it's retracted, protracted. Now if you zoom back out a little bit and look at the barbell, the barbell is here if I'm retracted, but if I'm protracted, it's here. Notice it's up about three or four inches. Right? There's like a three or four inch difference. So one of the things I'll say is you want to unrack and lock out each rep as close to you as possible. So it's not like I'm trying to push it away from me into the ceiling, which is three or four inches up by protracting. I want to stay squeezed back or retracted. So every rep locks out only with my elbows three or four inches closer to me than if I did that. So if we're going to do a recap, and then I'll show what it looks like in real speed, regular speed. Thing one, establish independent control that you actually can retract and protract your shoulders, your shoulder girdle, independent from your arms, independent from whether you're locked out of your elbows or not. Those are two different body parts that you should be able to control independently. Thing two, make sure your hooks are at the right height, make sure your position on the bench is in the right place, not too far back nor too far forward, and then unrack just with your elbows which means you keep your retraction. Thing three, once you're unracked and you're doing the set, it's the same thing. Lock out just with your elbows, so you're not trying to push the bar towards the ceiling, but you're locking out your elbows, keeping the bar, and you can really see it from this angle, here versus here, right? It's like a three or four inch difference. Lock out your reps as close to you as possible, not as far from you as possible, with that three or four inch difference. So let's look, see what that looks like in real time, again, from that side angle. So I retract, I get myself set up on the bench with my eyes just a tiny bit behind the barbell. Unlock just with my elbows, bring it over, and do the first rep and lock out just with my elbows. I'll do five so you can see. And then on the last rep, here's lockout. Here's what it looks like if I screw up. You want to be here, not here. Okay. I think that covers all the points. Hopefully that clarifies. Hopefully you're able to see all of the points as I was illustrating them. And drop comments down below if you have any questions or need further points clarified. And we'll see you next time.